what is going on guys welcome back to the channel tonight we're gonna talk about the way to start what these are how the glow plug actually works in the cylinder i'm going to show you the difference between this other glow plug and what is actually happening with way to start if you guys want to know come and check this out all right let's do it All right, guys, thanks so much for coming back and checking us out. Guess what? It is freezing cold out. It's 11 degrees. I want to talk about glow plugs today because we are using them like no other now that is cold. Well, we use them all the time, but we're going to notice it more when it's cold when these things don't work. Now, first off, this is a six liter glow plug. I have put in the description a link to the glow plug video, actually this glow plug right here, where we turned it on. We made the glow plug glow. That's what its name is. It is a glow plug. This is what helps increase the cylinder temperature of your 6O. Now your 67, this is its glow plug. This is way more sophisticated than this bigger size 6 liter one. If you guys are driving the 6.0s and the 7.3s. This one's very similar to the 7.3. You guys know sometimes you have to cycle your keys quite a few times other when compared to the 6.7. Now the 6.7 glow plug as you can see here. Now this 6.7 one, well both of them are providing that crucial heat source for combustion and more so this is definitely going to improve that cold weather starting and cold weather emissions when these are working properly. This glow plug is made of a material that heats up when electricity flows through it. Both of these glow plugs are controlled by a glow plug control module and activated when either that module or relay has voltage supplied. Key on. The transit diesels have a metallic instant start glow plug that can actually stay on for eight minutes. I don't have a transit glow plug here uh, to show you guys, but it is a bit different. The ceramic instant start glow plug that we find in our awesome six sevens can actually operate for up to 20 minutes i did not know that did you guys know that the glow plug control module activates all the glow plugs will actually keep them on during an extended idle in cold temperatures the glow plug control module or that relay i was talking about provides battery voltage for approximately two seconds for these ones to heat the glow plug and then actually the module will drop down that voltage and keep it around seven volts so that it can maintain that temperature without overheating the glow plug for too long. Now a big thing that I want to let you guys know if you did not know already is that even though that wait to start light or that curly cue on your dash is on, even though it's off, it does not mean that your glow plugs are off. That light on off time is not dependent on glow plug on off time. A bit of information for you guys, and I will put in the comment section once you guys start commenting. What is, big question, the threshold for when the glow plugs come on? There is a specific oil temperature that has to be reached in order for the glow plugs to not come on. What is that? I know right now and I'm not gonna tell you, I don't want you to go look. Just quickly drop down in the comments, tell me what you think uh, what that engine oil temperature is. All right, uh, one thing I wanna talk about are these. These are the glow plug control modules. Now in my right hand, this is my favorite. This is the 6.7 glow plug control module. This is the six liter glow plug control module. O3 to 2010, if you had an Econoline, 2011 to pretty much current, and 22, I'm sure, is gonna be the exact same thing, but the part number is gonna be different, it's gonna be a different model year. So, these are both doing the same thing. This and this are monitoring the resistance of the glow plug. Because we have emissions, or this is considered an emissions component, we need to make sure our cylinder temp is always up to temp. 
B67 not only is monitoring our low parts, but if you guys know, I'll put a link in the description of another video that I talk about the after treatment systems on the 67. We have low plug controls and also three heaters that are in the DEF system. We have a heater in the tank, we have a heater on the pump, and we have a heater coiled around the line uh, to keep our DEF from freezing. We have another video coming out where we're going to be talking about DEF storage and what the heaters are doing and all that stuff. Um, but that is all happening from this module. Now, I have a couple of trucks here today. Uh, one is a 6 liter and another one is a 6.7. I can't remember the year, but we're going to go out. I'm actually going to wait for the next morning to start this and see the differences between the 6.7, which has been sitting for probably about seven weeks, and this 6 liter. We got two cold engines. It's going to be brutal cold cold in the morning, so I want to get that uh, cold started for you. But 6.7. 6-0. Let's go start these boys. It is about 7.30 in the morning and currently 11 degrees. Freezing cold out and I want to talk about what we're going to do for this old girl 6-0 cold start. Now I haven't done anything besides realize that I probably should make a video about this. Um, this is a 2006 with I don't know if you guys can see that, 280,000 miles on it. I just cleared all the snow off. And we're gonna cycle the key for the first time. You guys can see the curly Q on. We're gonna let that go all the way off. I don't know, should I just hit it on the first try and see? Let's do it, hitting it. Oh man, ooh, ooh, she fired right up. No problems, let's get this thing cranking cranking. Let's go look out the tailpipe. Okay, we got some some light smoke. I don't know if you guys can see the color. Okay, you guys can see the color right there against the tire. Looks like normal cold start smoke. Gray white smoke is an indication of cylinder temp too low. But oh, you can hear the turbo. I don't know if you guys just heard that spool up. But this 0660 is uh, definitely been put to use. You guys see it has the utility body on it, uh, doing uh, heavy duty uh, equipment repair. Uh, and I currently, I have it for rough running in an engine noise and um, they brought it in originally for a no start. So uh, currently right now it's starting just fine. I've been driving it hot and cold and haven't had an issue yet. We are just going to be verifying the concern again if we can and starting uh, fresh cold in the morning. All right, guys, next scene. All right, guys, next shot. And it has gotten, well, a little sunnier out. It's still cold. It was 11, but now it is 16 degrees. It hasn't gone up too much. We've cleaned the truck off, but have not done anything. This is a 2012-67. If you guys saw the wait to start short I made, this is actually this truck. So we're going to first key cycle this thing. Make sure the snow is not gonna get in. See what this 67 does. Ooh. Well, we start it. First key cycle, I'm gonna hit it. You guys see the curly Q? It's been sitting for probably about six weeks. Let's see if it starts. All right, fire it up. As to be expected. Definitely got some white smoke coming out this one. You guys can see how that smoke is hanging. That white smoke, any white smoke coming from the exhaust from a diesel, only when it's cold is an indication of cold cylinder temp. That white, gray, chalky colored exhaust smoke, that is indicative of cylinder temp. 
too low. And see, it's already cleared up that 6.0 earlier this morning. That was really hanging. That took a while for it to eventually heat up. These high pressure fuel system trucks start way better in the cold. Comparing the smoke after running for a little bit like we did the 6.0, you can see that uh, even without the Flowmaster on here, this is still not chooching as much as that six liter did. So, definitely a word to the wise, make sure you're gonna have healthy glow plugs in your power stroke, just so that we have the ability to cold start without any problems. You guys, you 7.3 dudes, man, those things, remember when we were cranking those and letting those really sit long? Well, these new trucks are getting better and better. So let me know in the comment section what model truck you guys got, what Ford you're driving, and how long you're letting it start. This is going back and, and uh, uh, reliving the short that I made talking about the way to start light and uh, what that actually means for you guys who drive diesels. Tell me what you think about in the comment section below. Remember to like, comment, sub, share, and I'll see you guys all next time. See ya.